So this is the difference between some of the easily confused minerals. Um, amphibole has, is pitch black versus pyroxene. Amphibole on the left, pyroxene on the right. Amphibole has two cleavages. Now you can see the flat shiny surface, I hope. And if you turn it 60 degrees, you'll see another surface. So the two cleavages are at 60 degrees to each other. Well, 56 degrees, really versus pyroxene, which is often dark green in color, and it has two cleavages. You can see that shine, I hope you can. But they're at 90 degrees to each other. So pyroxene, two cleavages at 90, often dark green. Amphibole, two cleavages at 56, often pitch black. Sometimes they used to call it horn blend. Okay, this is the difference between quartz, that's quartz, calcite, these ones are calcite, and fluorite, these ones are fluorite. Now they're all sort of clear, they can all have very similar colors, and they look like nice crystals. Well, quartz is very hard, it's harder than glass. In fact, glass is made out of, out of quartz. Um, it has hexagonal crystals. Hopefully you can see the one in the smoky quartz. Um, but when it breaks, it has conchoidal fracture. So this is rose quartz. No real flat shiny surfaces, no cleavage planes. Oh, okay. Um, calcite. Can you see that 6120 cleavage on that one? And the little ones here, I don't know, hopefully you can see that they're rhombohedral in, in shape, like a parallelogram. Um, they do have cleavage. Now, calcite also has an interesting property. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. It'll take text if you can see through it. And it'll double it. It's called double refraction. That's calcite. Calcite also fizzes with acid. Reacts, chemically reacts with acid. Now fluorite looks like colored ice. And again it has very similar colors to quartz, I suppose. This is a purple one. Very similar to amethyst, except it does have flat shiny surfaces on which it breaks. Those are cleavage planes. And it has four directions of cleavage. That's why you get these um, octahedral shapes. These are actually cut that way, cleaved that way. But anyways, four directions of cleavage, very soft. Both calcite and fluorite are softer than glass, whereas quartz is harder than glass. This is the difference between graphite and molybdenite. Graphite is gray-greasy. It is in the top of the screen here. It's gray. It's very greasy. It'll rub off on your fingers. Molybdenite is often associated with quartz, and it's more bluish. It's got a bluish tint to it. Hopefully you can see that that's not the same color. They're pretty similar, though. Oftentimes, molybdenite will look much more metallic than graphite does. So this is the difference between halite, halite is what salt is made of, what table salt is made out of, and gypsum. Now gypsum can come in a lot of different varieties. However, it's all softer than your fingernail. This is selenite gypsum. And what that means is that your fingernail can scratch it. And if you rub it on your fingernail, it will not scratch your fingernail. It is softer than your fingernail. It does not have cubic cleavage. It cleaves on flat, shiny surfaces, but only cleaves well in one direction. Whereas halite is, again, clear. Um, it can have different colors, but mostly it's clear. And it cleaves, or cuts, breaks, I suppose, on flat, shiny surfaces. And it makes a cube. 
sort of cubic cleavage. It has three perfect cleavages at 90 degrees. Gypsum does not. Not only that, halite will scratch your fingernail. This one's halite. This is the difference between muscovite on the left and biotite on the right. Both are micas. Both have flat, shiny surfaces on which they break, the cleavage planes. They have one cleavage, one perfect cleavage, and that's it, none others. And they're plasticky. The main difference here is muscovite's brown, biotite is black, and that's it. These are the brassies, the brassy minerals. They have brassy luster. They're metallic, they're sulfides, and they have brassy metallic luster. Silvery brassy, that's this one, is arsenopyrite. Yellow brassy is chalcopyrite. Pale brassy, on the right, is ordinary pyrite. So there's silver brassy. On the left, arsenopyrite, yellow brassy, chalcopyrite in the middle, and pale brassy, that's pyrite. Continuing on, we have brown brassy, sort of like bronze, I suppose. Um, that is pyrotite. And then we have the peacock brassy, which is pretty easy to identify. Sometimes it's quite purple. The one on the top here um, is sort of a deep purple looking. And that one is Bornite. Peacock Brassy, or Purple Brassy, I suppose, is Bornite. Okay, Brown Brassy Pyrotite, Pale Brassy Pyrite, Yellow Brassy Chalcopyrite, and Silver Brassy Arsenopyrite. These ones are the Felspars. On the left, we have Plagioclase Felspar. Now, plagioclase comes from, um, well, calcium to sodium rich uh, aluminum silicate. And it goes from white, which would be a sodium rich uh, aluminum silicate, to gray to blue. And the bluish and gray and darker grays are the calcium rich plagioclases. On the right, you can see the pink ones. The pink ones, and I suppose there's a greenish blue one down here. Those are potassium felspars, or orthoclase felspar. And sometimes we just refer to that as K-spar. The atomic symbol for potassium is K. So K-spar, K-spar. It can be anywhere from green to more of a reddish color. And oftentimes, if you can see it close, it looks like horse meat. I know, I know what you're thinking. Anyways, another difference that you might see and it's kind of difficult to see on these ones, is there's often striations on the cleavage planes of plagioclase, but not so for case bar.